Good morning everyone. So time for another video and uh, in this one today I'm going to try and see if I can get uh, slightly better consumption figures from the Polestar 2. Basically uh, the temperature's warmed up a little bit. It's 8 degrees today. I think it was about 10 or 11 yesterday. We're well, not particularly cold temperatures overnight. In fact my display has just gone up to 9 degrees and uh, I'm going to drive 13 miles to collect something and then 13 miles back. So it's not very far but it's um, on a dual carriageway. So normally this is the kind of drive I would do at say 60 maybe well no not 60 60, 70 miles an hour, maybe just over in fact, um, because it is a nice uh, nice wide road, the a A23 up to Crawley. But today I thought um, it would be good to uh, preheat the car nicely. Um, I'm going to set the internal temperature to 19 degrees, so not particularly warm in the car. And uh, I'm going to go with uh, one pedal driving set to low. And uh, I'm going to drive at uh, no more than 60 miles an hour as gently as I possibly can drive there and then drive back and we'll see what kind of consumption figures I get to see if we can get something slightly better than what I normally see in winter. So uh, yeah, let's have a look at uh, Google Maps. Okay, so uh, in Google Maps here, we're going to put in the destination. And uh, again, this is, I looked it up earlier, so I can just select from my list. And uh, there we go. World featuring car phone warehouse may not be open yet when you arrive. Okay, yes, that's, that's nice. That, that's a really good feature that it, it tells you it warns you about opening times so it opens at 10 o'clock so yeah 20 minute drive 942 we'll get there with 70 percent battery um, covering 13 miles now you can see here on the display at the moment we've got 79 percent battery and uh, nine degrees outside now something i wanted to point out that i mentioned in my video the other day is this regen so um if you saw the last video i posted i talked about uh regen charge limitations at higher battery percentage now today we're only at 80 percent on the battery and we're at temperature of nine degrees so you can see here in the display the charge and the power there are no limitations at all showing there so um yeah this is kind of the ideal scenario where 80 percent is a good position to be in and a warmer temperature helps to reduce those kinds of limitations so uh yeah i'm going to reset the trip computer and let's uh there we go click to reset so it's it's fully reset and ready to go i've preconditioned the car probably for 15 minutes or so to try and warm it up in here and we will head off all right let's go Okay, so we have arrived at the destination and um, the trip computer says 13.1 miles, 34.3. It's actually increased a little bit to 34.6 kilowatt hours per 100 miles. The problem with the, uh, the, the way the trip manual will, will calculate is that as soon as you stop, um, it will continue to uh, account for any electrical usage from keeping the car warm. Um, so it'll, it'll keep accumulating. So I'm going to stop there at 34.3 and use that as the number for the first leg. And then I'll reset it and then we'll use the second leg and then we'll total the two up. I don't want to um, bias the results by sitting here in the car for a few minutes while, while we're keeping it warm. Um, but yeah, that, uh, that is actually really low for, for this kind of journey from my experience. I've driven on the A23 regularly um, in all kinds of weather and I have not seen that kind of consumption on this leg of the journey. So it's actually um, a slight increase in elevation as well doing this. So driving back is a slight reduction in elevation. So it'll be interesting to see if the total of the two actually reduces um, and what kind of consumption we get at the end. Now uh, we've arrived with 72%. So um, that's actually really good. Uh, again, that's something I've mentioned in other videos. Google Maps said we should arrive with 70%. We arrive with 72. That's probably conservative driving that's really helped that. But Google Maps is pretty reliable. And uh, if if anything else, actually, it's probably more conservative. So I usually get there with slightly better than Google Maps states. So, uh, yeah, I'm just going to go and pick up what I need to get and then drive back and we'll total up the total uh, consumption and see what we get uh, at the end of the, the full 26 miles of driving. OK, so I've collected what I need to get and I've set the route on Google Maps to head home now. And 63 percent is what it's showing when we get back. So 21 minutes and 13 miles, 63 percent. Let's see how uh, that compares with Google Maps and the actual percentage when we get back.
Okay, so I'm back home now after that drive, another 13.1 miles. So yeah, it looks like it's just over 26 miles that round trip. And uh, it came in with uh, 34.8 kilowatt hours per 100 miles. And uh, when you add the two together, 34.8 plus the 34.3 divided by two to get the average round trip, that's 34.55. So that's quite interesting. Yeah, that's pretty good. I mean, if we go with a usable battery of say 72.5 divided by 34.55, we get a range of 210 miles total range within the, uh, the capacity of the battery. But, um, yeah, I drove at 60 miles an hour. There was some water on the road coming back, actually. It did start to rain, so that reduces the efficiency. Um, I did have the air conditioning on. I had it set at 80, uh, sorry, 19 degrees, and uh, I drove with the one pedal driving on the... Uh, the low setting um, because lately I've been finding actually the low setting sometimes can be a little bit more comfortable. The stand is actually quite aggressive um, and the off I find just coasts far too much and then I forget. So the low is actually quite a nice compromise for driving comfort. Um, and uh, yeah, that, that comes in at a total range of 210 miles with a temperature of eight degrees. Now, the truth is that there's not that much fun driving like that. 60 miles an hour on a dual carriage, which feels so slow. I know in reality, with a short drive like that, it probably makes hardly any difference to the time at which you get there. But I was driving conservatively as well, and I don't think... Uh, I don't think you should should buy a Polestar 2 to drive like that. I mean, if you want uh, supreme efficiency, then this is not the car. No, th there's no question about that. The Tesla Model 3 long range, yes, is much more efficient. Uh, it's it's going to use much less power. Um, and it is also a similar kind of performance car to this. So, yeah, I would go with that if you if that's the most important factor. Um, but uh, there are other cars that are, that are more affordable, that are much more efficient, like the Kias, the Hyundai's things like that, but they don't offer the same performance. So when, you, when you're when you looking at cars with this kind of performance, 400 horsepower, um, you know, that handles really well, really nice to drive, th your options are very limited. And I, I personally think that um, accepting the slightly worse consumption is absolutely fine by me. Now, if you like to do long trips uh, on a regular basis, say you're doing, you know, quite frequent three, 400 mile trips in a day, that's a different story. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm happy to get the range that I'm getting from this car, even if it is a bit more thirsty because the performance more than make, makes up for it. Now, another interesting thing to look at is we used 14% of the battery to travel uh, basically 26.2 miles. So let's go, let's do 14% divided by... 26.2 uh, wrong way around 26.2 divided by 14 percent times that by 100 we actually then using that calculation method get 187 miles of potential range so this is something that's uh, kind of interesting if you're you're looking at consumption data you might get one thing from the trip computer showing in kilowatt hours per 100 miles but when you calculate it back in percentage you might actually get a different number now um Again, I'm more than happy to see comments and feedback from people on this. I'm not saying which is the right method here because the issue is, um, from what I've read and a lot of different cars, is the percentage doesn't necessarily clearly indicate to you the actual range of the car. So you have uh, obviously the usable battery, you have some reserve that remains, and some people have even found in, in some cars that a certain percentage, at cer uh, the battery at certain... Um, stages within the drive will actually give you different amounts of uh, distance. So I don't personally tend to use the percentage method. And so far, I've just been relying on the, the, the trip data that the car gives because I'm not 100% convinced that say the first 5% on your driver's display gives you the same range necessarily that the last 5% might do. So there's a lot of other factors in there, but it's just interesting thing to see if you use a percentage um, as a way of calculating your range that you do get different numbers. So yeah, that uh, hopefully this has been an interesting test and it just shows that uh, with some careful and cautious driving, you can uh, do a fairly short round trip at 60 miles an hour and get under 35 kilowatt hours per 100 miles as a, a as a consumption number on the Polestar 2. So yeah, hopefully this video has been useful and if you could uh, please subscribe down below, that would be great and I'll be back again with another video very soon. Thank you.